This time of the year is a rough time, right before the release of all these games, which is going to put a strain on everybody's budget to go out and buy all these titles. But it's also the slowest month of the year in September as far as income goes. So I want to address a little bit about this slow time because one thing that I see a lot of existing centers, whether they're two, three, four years in, they start losing some momentum and some drive and some fire and keeping their centers fresh. And, you know, I find myself doing this. I find our store managers doing this a lot. But it, it's a lot of times you're thinking, I don't have time to do any of these things. I don't have time to, to do this project here in the store because I'm too busy running the store. Well, September and October is the time to get those projects done that have been going on all year that you've not had time for. So simple things that don't cost a lot of money, like going to Lowe's or Menards or Home Depot and buying some paint and repainting a room, paint a pattern in a room, paint a design in a room, theme a room differently, pull everything out of there, put black trash bags over the door for a week and close it off and say there's secret things going on, uh, and then roll in some new chairs in that room, you know, or that section of your store if you don't have rooms. Just pick something and spend a little bit of money on it to redo it and make it fresh and to give it that fresh feeling going into this busy season, which is November, December, January for land centers. I, you know, I just feel like a lot of people, they back away from doing those, those types of things that, that are the things that interest gamers when they come in your store. You know, you don't have a lot of money right now because it's a slow season, so you, you have to be creative with what you do. Go back to some of your grassroots marketing ideas. Go back to, you know, printing out flyers and passing out flyers. Those things you don't have time to do during the busy season, do those now. Reach out to churches, reach out to nonprofit groups, you know, try to reinvigorate your birthday party packages. Those are the types of things that you know, again, this is just from our experience. We spend our summer running around like crazy at these conventions. You know, J-Mac, we go to Kansas City for a week. We come back here. We're in Indianapolis for two different weeks. You know, we're talking about expanding to Cincinnati and Chicago and Atlanta with these conventions. We don't have time during the summer to get anything done. Mm -hmm. But then we get into this season where all of a sudden it's like it, it, it's, it's stressful because the money's not coming in. But as far as projects and time, it's like a relief. You know, it's it's like a, a take a breath, step back, look at everything. What are some things we can get done around here? You know, I, I know our staff, for example, are going around and just cleaning up games on the PCs, old games, putting new games on. They're going through the Xboxes, deleting and adding, you know, new games or making sure the games are properly installed. Those are things you don't have time to, you know, have time to do that all year long. Right. So use this time of the year while we're in the slow season to get all those little projects done that don't cost any money or don't cost very much money that'll give your store that boost going into the busy season. Yeah, uh, just kind of quick examples, you know, here we've, we're rearranging two rooms, we're cleaning out a storage room to make room for more stations in the Indianapolis store and uh, yeah, that it would be impossible to do that for us in the summer with, with you know, higher right, cu high, higher customer base, and then all the other uh, right. ancillary things that we've got going on. Literally, at the end of that time period, we started shipping things out of the Indianapolis store to clean that room out, so that we've got this group of Smash Brothers players that come every Sunday, and it's now you know 60, 70 people sometimes on a Sunday, and we want to give them more space. We're not spending any money to do this at all. One other thing, quickly on my notes, as we kind of finish this off, is. The biggest problem I see when guys get slow and, the, and gals in the land center business is that they start changing their hours. And to me, that is a humongous sign of demise in the long term. Like, if you're constantly open all, you know, seven days a week and you have a fixed schedule and it gets slow, and I see land centers start to say, okay, we're going to close earlier during the week now, or we're going to close on Mondays, or we're going to close on Sundays, our slow days, to me, that is like a red flag going up that you're in trouble. Like instead of adjusting, like in their minds, they're, they're thinking they're making a good business decision. Like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lower my cost because my revenue coming in is not as high and I just don't have the money to keep it open those days. But instead, they need to buckle down in just a week or two weeks worth of hitting the ground, passing out flyers, knocking on doors, kissing babies or whatever you talk about, J-Mac, when you're out, you know, I kiss policing. A lot of babies. Or, right, you've kissed a lot of babies in your day, but... Go do those things. Don't change your store hours. Be consistent with your store hours. You know, unless you're a brand new startup and you're just trying to figure out your clientele, if you've been open for a year or two, don't start changing your store hours because customers pick up on that. 
Then it becomes confusing. I can't remember if they're open on Mondays or if this is Sunday, they're closing early or whatever else. And they'll know. They'll, they'll know you're in trouble. And that then makes them hesitant to buy your monthly membership or, you know, reach out to their friends and invite their friends to come down. I mean, it's, it's just a bad sign to see that somebody's starting to change their hours. You just don't want to see that happen. Yeah, and I, I, I kind of go back to what you say a lot of times is that it, it, it's not going to make any difference whether you close early or not. You're still going to be spending the same on bills and, and utilities and all that kind of stuff. Right, and again, these smaller shops that are run by the owners, you know, you don't even really have to worry about the time. And I do this, and I did not, this is the first year I've not done this, and we're really paying for it financially, and it's stressful, but I just have so many other things going on. But I've always, in, in September and October, taken back over the counter from myself, you know, because I cost the company nothing extra, and so I can watch the counter, especially during the day when it's not slow. We don't have to change our hours at all. We save costs because we don't have an hourly person at the counter. And then I focus those hourly people so that they don't lose too many hours. I don't want to stress my staff out. I book them more on Fridays and Saturdays when we're busy and have them start running events and getting other things going to try to get people fired back up and ready for the busy season again. So, you know, there's a lot of other options besides closing your store. You know, your electric bill is $1,000 a month. You can tweak it here and there a little bit and maybe save 50 bucks a month on your electric bill. But if you're on the edge of 50 bucks a month or not from closing down, then you have a lot more trouble than trying to close that extra day a week to save some electricity. Right. And, yeah, I was definitely going to say, uh, you know, talking about you t retaking over the counter and putting in putting in your hours. Because, hey, if you're trying to start this land center, it's, it's your sacrifice. It's your business. Right. You have to put in whatever hours you have to take to make up for the slow, busy season. And it's like every other business in the world. It doesn't matter if it's a restaurant or a convenience store, uh, you know, a retailer, a boutique shop. It doesn't matter. The owners, especially in the beginning, have to be super involved with it, you know, to make sure that it gets off the ground. Because it is. It's a brand new, like, it's like having a child. You know, you have to teach that child. You have to raise that child. You have to nurture that child. You can't just throw your one-year-old, you know, out into the world and expect he, you know, her to survive. You know, that's... It's just the same with the business. 